Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Have you ever had an image that you wish, when you captured it, you had used a wider aperture? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use Photoshop to naturally blur a background. For this demonstration, I'm using this image of my cat, Rocky. I recently updated the firmware of my Nikon Z2, and after it updated, I just pointed my camera at something to test it out, and Rocky was an unwilling subject standing there in the corner of the living room. So I took some shots of him. I wasn't really concerned about my camera settings, and as you could see, I shot it at f8. So the background isn't blurred out as much as I would have liked it to be. So, we're going to use Photoshop. Now, before we do, I know some of you at least are thinking, well, you could use Lightroom to blur the background. And the way you would try to do this in Lightroom is you would get the masking tools and you would select the subject. Once it finds the subject, in this case, Rocky, we'll invert it so it now is selecting the background. Then we'll go down to Clarity, and this is what most people do, and they move Clarity down. They might try to move Texture down as well you know, stuff like that, they'll take sharpness down. But I think you'll agree, that doesn't really look like lens blur. That just looks like a surreal kind of blur, and it's not natural looking. This is where Photoshop shines. So we're gonna delete this mask, and we're gonna end up where we started. And now where we're starting is a processed image. Most specifically, I did crop it. If we go to the crop tool, you could see I did shoot this horizontally and I cropped it into a vertical 4x5 and um, just so it's tightened up a little bit that's all I did there. Um, I also went to the basic tab and did some adjustments there and that's pretty much it. And it's rocky he's ready to get the blur background blurred out. Now to do that we're going to send it into Photoshop. We're just going to right click right on the image go down to edit in and go over to edit in Adobe Photoshop 2022. And when you do that, uh, Lightroom is actually going to be creating either a TIFF or a PSD file, depending on how you have a Lightroom set up uh, to export images into Photoshop. And once it's in Photoshop, uh, the, what we're going to do is use a new feature in Photoshop that's in the neural filters. And what you may find when you try to use it, if you go up to filter, you'll notice it's grayed out. The reason why is because it doesn't work on a background layer. Now there's one of two things you could do here. You could duplicate the background layer by hitting Command or Control J on your keyboard. That will duplicate the background layer and that neural filter tool will be active. The other thing you could do is you could just click on this little padlock to make it a normal layer. Once you do that and we go up to filter, you'll see neural filters is active. And the specific neural filter we're going to use as of the making of this video is still in beta. It's called Depth Blur. And we'll turn that on. And what may happen is it will do a horrible job at first. And as you could see, it did a horrible job. Uh, let me uh, turn the blur strength all the way up so we could better see it in the video. And you could see it's blurring out Rocky's face. And we don't want to blur out his face. Now there's two different ways we could go about to fix this. The first and probably the easiest way is just click on focus subject. And when you do that, it will reevaluate the scene and find out what the subject is, in this case the cat, and you can see that he's now in focus and the background is blurry. There is before and there is after. And now I mentioned there's two different ways you could go about having it find the part you want in focus. One, the first way, is to click this little box. Let's undo that, and I'll show you the other way. The other way is, if you look at this little like thumbnail up here, you'll notice when I hover over it, the cursor is actually a little plus sign. What you could do is click on the area you want to be in focus. I want his eyes in focus. So I'm going to go over here, and on his right eye, I'm just going to put that plus sign right over his right eye and click with the left mouse button. 
and you'll see that now he's in focus. And I like this one a little better because basically his head, which is closest to, cam to the camera, uh, most specifically his eyes are in focus. Then everything kind of behind him starts to fall off out of focus and stuff in front of him starts to go out of focus, including his paw down here. The other way, his whole body was in focus and everything else was out of focus. So I like this way a little better. Now I have blur strength all the way up. Now again, there's before and there's after. You could see that it's a much more natural looking lens blur compared to what we did in Lightroom when we tried to just pull clarity and texture and sharpness down. It didn't look as nice. Now, uh, when you do this, uh, you'll see the focal distance slider is grayed out. If we didn't want to use one of those two methods, that is click on that box or click on the part on this little thumbnail image up here that we want to be in focus, the focus distance slider would have been in, in play and we would have been able to move that to try to move where the actual focal point is. That's a little more difficult, so it's much easier to either click that box or to click right on the image. Now, focal range, um, if um, you want more of the background to be in focus, like his back, let's say, I could start moving this focal range slider to the right, and you'll see that it will start to pull more of the background in focus. And they'll do a before after here as well. There's before and there's after. Now I kind of liked it the way it was, so I'm going to pull that all the way down. Uh, you also could head, add haze uh, to the uh, image. I don't really like this typically. You'll see what happens. Don't care for that. You also could affect the temperature. So if I move this like to the extreme right, we're going to be warming up the background. I don't really care for that. And of course, the extreme left would be cooling it off. Uh, tint, saturation, and brightness, so we can move that to the right to make like the background brighter. It also affects the image as well. It's actually um, affecting what's in focus less than what's out of focus. And since the focus varies in the image, uh, so it'll affect some areas of the image more than others. So, and you could add grain to the image as well. So let's say we're happy with this. Well, I'll put it to a new layer. And what I would suggest you do is do output it to a new layer because what you may find is this may not be uh, good enough for you. And you may want it blurred more than that. Even though we have blur strength set at 100, we can't turn it up anymore. Just output it to a new layer, click OK. And then once it does that, you see it's on its own layer. There's before and there's after. And let's just pretend I wanted to blur it out even more. Well, just run the filter again. Filter, neural filter. Again, it's going to do the same thing. It's not that smart uh, in that it remembers what we just did. Uh, it's going to blur him out. So what we're going to have to do is get that little plus sign over his eyeball. Click once with the left mouse button. Let it go. And just for this demonstration, I'll turn blur strength all the way up. And then click OK. So now we have another uh, layer of blur. So there is, let's do it this way. There is our original image with the background pretty much in focus. Then one layer of blur, two layers of blur. So, you know, you could do that if you want. In this case, I don't think I need to, so I'll, I'll turn that or throw that out. So we're done in Photoshop. How do we get it back in Lightroom? This is what I do. Um, I just close down Photoshop. Then on a Mac, you just go up to Photoshop, quit Photoshop. On a Windows computer, just quit Photoshop. And then make sure you click Save. That's very important. Click on that, and then once you do that, you'll be back into Lightroom, and this image will be back into the collection and folder that you had it in. If you didn't have it in the collection, it'll just be in the folder. And you'll see once we get there, down in the film strip, we have two versions of the image. We have the original image right here with the background that's in focus, and then the new image with the blurred out background. So that's how you could go about naturally blurring out a background in, image, in an image from Lightroom using Photoshop. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.